Oi, pessoal, eu sou a Camila Macedo, estou aqui com meu colega da equipe de seleção e programação de filmes do Olhar de Cinema, Eduardo Valente, para a gente começar uma conversa sobre o filme Tsarevna Descamada, uma estreia brasileira que faz parte da Mostra Novos Olhares. E a gente está com a diretora do filme, Yudus Bakhtiozina, para falar sobre essa primeira exibição do filme no Brasil, o um filme que estreou no Festival de Berlim no início do ano. Então, agora é aquela mudancinha de língua, vamos para o inglês para conversar com a Yudus. Yudus, thank you so much for being here with us and, of course, for screening your film at the festival. We are very glad to have it on our program. And, well, Tsarevna Skelling is your first feature film, but you already have a solid career as an artist. And I saw a video, a TED Talk one, actually, uh, in which you talk about your work with photography and visual arts. And there you said something about being a photographer interested in documenting dreams and escapes from rea reality. In some sense, I guess this is also an appropriate way to describe your work in Tsarevna Skelling. So I would like to start this talk, in by, this talk by asking you about your first ideas for the film and the motivations to this movement between creating narratives through still images and then through cinema. Thank you, Camila. Thank you for the question. Uh, that's actually very interesting. You remind me about my TED talk and I haven't thought about this, but this actually, yeah, also pure escapism, uh, the film <laughs> you're going to watch. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's a fairy tale uh, which uh, created by me, but it's based on um, childhood memories from all fairy tales from Slavic culture and um, also based on my research into archetypes of uh, fairy tales characters. Uh, it has um, probably, um, no, it's, it has my fantasy as an artist as well. And um, I wanted to, create the film which uh, will bring happiness to people's lives and inspire them um, to live their destiny, let's say. And then we are talking about Tsarevnas in the film. It's not only about a particular gender, though archetype is a female, um, it's mainly talking about finding your, um, as I said, your, your path, your destiny, your best uh, qualities and um, not trying to repeat someone's success, but achieving your personal success in your um, life and Mm, through the language of uh, uh, folklore fairy tale, I'm actually talking about contemporary issue, contemporary subject, and that's also an idea to inspire younger generations of uh, Russians um, keep the interest in our culture, in our folklore, and see that it's uh, possible to um transform it keep the actual uh, base but transform it to what is present or talking about um some worries which surrounding us and i find the language of fairy tales is extremely uh exciting and interesting because uh that's the language for children. And it's supposed to be very simple and you can't mm, go extremely complicated in terms of language and dialogues, but using such instruments as visual forms, um, uh, under levels, uh, metaphors, um archetypes and 
um, historical uh, artifacts, uh, you can bring a lot of information, um, especially for those who already have the background and knowledge, they can uh, quickly catch it and develop the idea behind the idea. So um, I believe that my film is actually possible to be watched uh, uh, in uh, several ways. You can uh, watch it as a simple fairy tale from uh, point A to point B. So because it's very uh, lined uh, like structure, which brings you from um, from the beginning to the actual end. Uh, and it's always um, a journey. So it's clear um, for the audience to watch it and like for kids um, and kids actually watching our film. And um, other ways is like to watch it uh, vertically through uh, historical periods of our country, uh, through metaphors, or uh, through cultural uh, history as well, um, through some social issues which are living in our society nowadays. And um, you you can even watch it like using the spiral uh, development of the human being, like uh, watching it through the um, developing of the main character and uh, her growing. Um, so it's possible to watch for uh, a very wide audience, uh, even if uh, you don't know much about uh, folklore of um, Russia uh, or like uh, Slavic countries, uh, you still can watch it um, as a fairy tale, just just a fairy tale. Then you have information, of course, you will um, uh, have different type of journey, I would say, through the film. It's the same that you are um, listening for the lecture and you know what the lecture is talking about and new information is taken by you to a new level, let's say. Then you don't know anything. It's a pure, like a pure new information and you might won't go that deep, but still that will be a new experience for you. It was nice to hear you because my the second question I had in my mind was exactly how have you decided to approach these contemporary issues and subjects like meritocratic way of achieving a successful life or the matter of female competition through the fairy tale format and you already answered it but then I, I must say that I am not uh, I don't know a lot about Russian folk tales or Slavic culture and history. Then I would like to ask you if you could quickly explain, I don't know a little about uh, the archetypes you have worked with, like Tsarevna itself, or even the Babushka who gives the main character, the magical tea for the Brazilian audience. Okay, um, thank you. <laughs> So we have uh, several archetypes. Um, there are a book uh, by Prop, who is actually analyzing uh, archetypes in uh, fairy tales. So uh, some common ones. Um, it's an archetype of a poor young lady, who is our Paulina, actually. Um, and even though uh, it's an archetype from the Slavic uh, fairy tale, um, it's uh, very much related to uh, religion because then you are um, struggling, you are closer to the God. That's what we have in our culture. So the person who is uh, struggling a lot, he's more connected to God. Um, and actually, there are um, like a hidden uh, 
meaning in the film as well, because we see um, in a Russian translation, uh, the film sounds like a fisherman daughter. Um, and basically we are talking about the daughter of a father who is never seen in the film. So it's like a figure of God and she's actually um, carrying a fish and sh she's uh, bringing the fish to another world. There she gave it to the table and she had to die. So basically <laughs> it's um, also interpretation, but in this, uh, my vision, it's uh, not a son, it's a daughter. Uh, and she, through the struggle, she's achieving um, the meeting with uh, her real uh, path, which she supposed to take and trying to beat Sarevna in her real life. Uh, another archetype we have, uh, it's like a protagonist, uh, someone who is also a main character, but sort of... Um, bringing uh, extra struggles to uh, other main character, which is our Adegea or Tsarevna the Swan, the other main character in the film. Um, she represents all Tsarevnas who had this ability to transform to uh, animals like snakes, like not a very pleasant ones, but in Russian fairy tales, it's very common that it says that about Tsarevna, which is like a nice lady, she's uh, represented at the first uh, front uh, as a nice character, that uh, good people transform her to a snake. And then I started to research into fairy tales like um, uh, seven, eight years ago. I was asking myself as a, an adult, why uh, good people, uh, if they're good, like maybe she done something wrong, this Tarema. So I started to question myself about what is good and bad in fairy tales, uh, like uh, Babushka or Baba Yaga, which we have in um, uh, fairy tales. It's an old lady and she's always represented as an evil, like someone scary who lives in the forest and um, she's not very nice and she actually eat kids. Uh, but it's never happening in fairy tales. Um, it's always about to happen, but uh, never the action fixed on paper. <laughs> so uh, then I researched in, uh, into Pagan's uh, rituals. I found out that um, like Slavic Pagans, they used to have this um, uh, ritual, then they took a small key and um, then the oven is almost finished, but still warm. On the spatial um, case, they bring the kid inside to warm him up and actually like uh, make a better for him. Uh, but in fairy tales, Baba Yaga described as the lady who is like doing the same stuff to eat kids. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, maybe she actually uh, was making this ritual to protect kids, but through the uh, years and years, it's transformed to something bad because the culture changed, Christianity came to uh, the land and it's like uh, religion transform uh, and moved away uh, pagans rituals to something bad. So it's very interesting uh, how the culture um, been influenced by history and politics inside the country, because in our country, it's been like uh, going through so many changes and complete uh, 
ruins like uh, from pagans to Christianity, then to Petrine era, then Soviet uh, period, then Perestroika, 90s and present time. Uh, so in the film, especially in outfits, in uh, entourage and interiors, I try to show uh, sometimes in one character, all of this uh, historical and cultural um, periods of our country to actually um, create the new face of uh, Russian culture because it's been so many times uh, smashed away. So like young generation is right now um, rather uh, taking something from um european countries or like american style but not using our uh culture uh and i'm trying to bring uh, this interest how um funky how exciting how deep uh is our culture and how it can talk about uh, modernity as well about present uh, time and uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things really nice to hear eduardo do you want to ask something yes yes because uh you just you were you were speaking about this uh the, the importance of the of the the relationship with this with this russian culture in in, in its traditions and its its folklore uh, but I, I also thought it interesting that at a certain point in your trajectory as a as an artist and as a person, you felt the need to 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 go abroad and to be away from Russia for for five years for your studies and for a part of your work, uh, both in in England and uh, and in Asia. And I was wondering how do you feel that that experience also reconnected you in some way to this heritage that you were talking about, and in which ways also maybe. It also changed and allowed you to look at it uh, from a different perspective yourself, because I think it's it's always something that that deeply changes a, a person when, when they spend some time away from their own uh, country. And then later, like you did, you return to work again in, in your in your motherland, so to speak. So, so how was that experience and how did it form you differently as, as an artist, maybe? Uh, thank you, Eduardo, for this question. It's actually a very good one because I just um, I remember that uh, then I was living in London. It was my first year. Uh, I created my first self-portrait, uh, which was inspired uh, a lot with stereotypes about Russians, which I've been receiving as a student living abroad and I've been hanging out with my friends and they suggested me a drink like uh, would you like it to drink I'm like I'm not drinking alcohol and like, why if you are Russian you should drink vodka as water um so I, I I made a joke I said yes of course and I also sell drugs guns and porno with kids <laughs> would you like to purchase one so and the reaction was very good because they started to laugh and they understood that they their like judgmental um, opinion about uh, a person from particular country just like this stereotype uh, so the influence started uh, from these uh, stereotypes, which uh, with some time transformed to a bigger project. And I started to challenge stereotypes, not only national ones, but also gender ones, uh, social and all this stuff. But uh, sometimes it's very good to um, live abroad especially when you're young you're a student you're exploring the world it's experience and also the ability to look at the place there used to be uh, from a different perception and uh, appreciate or get an idea how to improve something uh, and because my first degree is actually politics and uh, I'm, <laughs> so I had an ambition to become a first uh, uh, president woman in, in Russia, 
I still I still have this ambition one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's it's also a part of challenging stereotypes. So it's probably been in my uh, blood from a very young age. Um, but uh, I still enjoy uh, working abroad and um, extremely happy to be back home all the time. So it's a good uh, it's good for change for like keep your minds open and be more global uh, rather than local, but still talking about the place which gave you life. So that's that's my position, I would say. Do you want to add something, Eduardo? And reply no, or something? Uh, no, not in not in that. Uh, in that, I had another question here, but I, I'd rather you you make another one and then uh, maybe I'll come back. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, I have two questions, but I will first uh, make one which is more related to the process of making the film. Because you're not only write and direct, you are also the film editor, producer, you acted in it, and you are the costume designer. And I would like to know a little about the process of working in so many areas, which I guess maybe can be re related to uh, your background as a visual artist and a video artist, artist also. But I would like to ask about the costumes because it combines contemporary fashion with historical elements in a very particular way. So could you share with us some of your thoughts and research around its conceptions? Um, yes, I, I designed and I uh, made most of the costumes in the film. Um, it like in the hat pieces you can find very old techniques which I uh, use and I uh, went to school several years ago which uh, taught me embroidery in a traditional um, way it's uh, used for churches and it's also been used for uh, this pearl embroidery. So I uh, brought it to Kokoshniks, to head pieces, um, and they all uh, made by hand. Uh, it's embroidery uh, about uh, from uh, two to three months it takes like to create one piece. And um, it's not historical, those uh, Kokoshniks, uh, because in the film, you can also find work of my uh, friend, uh, Yuhan Nikodimos. He's actually recreating the historical Kokoshniks, which uh, used to be in the history. Uh, so they're traditional. Uh, you can find uh, similar ones in museums. Um, I create uh, different shapes and uh, designs which never exist in the history. So it's uh, using the uh, original technology, uh, but giving to it new designs. So it's, that's how I see the developing of culture in a way also like then you take something traditional, but you uh, create new pattern, new design, uh, new shape. And that's, that's the way I see how it can be um, more interesting for, especially like for younger generation. But um, for the costumes, like the clothes, uh, actually, it's a combination of uh, some of Petrine era with very uh, puff uh, forms. Um, it's uh, some of the modern uh, elements uh, of our present, like a fashion uh, things, but it's not um, taken uh, from the particular period. I just, I guess, the the flow I'm living as a, uh, <laughs> a person who lives now here and today. Uh, it's it just. Uh, coming because that's my time so it's natural mm. 
there are elements um, such as uh, gold tea, if you can see, uh, it was very popular in Soviet time. Uh, then people had uh, gold teeth and it was a fashion as well. So um, it's also used here as a uh, reference to solid period of time. Um, there are uh, shoes, also very important part, which were created specially for the film, uh, colors, uh, the material for each character. Uh, it has the particular uh, color. Um, so I combine um, embroidery with uh, funky uh, style, let's say, like uh, the, the comparing uh, I hear about my designs. It's to um, Vivian Westwood, uh, Vetsimans, uh, uh, Balenciaga, like all of this uh, trendy brands uh, which acquired Brave in um, the way it's made and cut it and um, uh, I think we have in common this chaotic um, experiments to the cloth. Uh, that's how I normally build uh, outfits. I I actually built it on the mannequin body, so it's almost like a sculpture for me. I work with fabric as uh, with uh, clay, um, so I never like wanted to be a um, cloth designer or costume designer. But actually, I do a lot of uh, costume designs for theaters uh, right now for Marinsky Theatre in Russia, for Royal Opera House in England. And it's interesting because I'm invited as an artist um, to do so. Um, but uh, fashion itself probably never been um, my ambition to, to, to work or create for fashion, uh, at least uh, for now. I got it. <laughs> Thanks, Eduardo. You, you may ask your question. Yeah, no, I actually uh, funny, but of course, I mean, it's not that uh, difficult to imagine. I also was very curious about this, this the question of the costume. So you 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 robbed a part of my question, which is oh, great. Sorry, but <laughs> no, it's it's great because then I can go to a different subject, which I also wanted to to bring up, which is uh, the humor. I think in in the film which is, uh, of course, like you said, fairy tales, a lot of them carry some, some particular humor in, I think, in many of the cultures. But I think that, like Camila, not being at all uh, uh, someone who is a specialized or who, who really uh, understands or, or, or relates in depth to the, the Russian folklore and the Russian uh, fairy tales, but I think it's quite amazing how much of humor uh, you use in the way that the film is structured. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this, uh, the, the role of, of humor to you in the way you, you, you structure the film and, and maybe your work in general. Oh, Eduardo, you just made the best compliment to me because <laughs> <laughs> the film is a representation of my sense of humor. Um, I'm very ironical person and self-ironical, so the film is also based on uh, irony and a bit of uh, sarcastic uh, uh, jokes uh, in the film. And extremely happy to hear that uh, Russian sense of humor is understood. Uh, it's 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 very a huge pleasure for me to hear that. Uh, and I hope you've been laughing when you were watching the film. Um, so I think it's uh, every uh, film director, any artist through his work is actually uh, showing uh, himself. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, pure artistic work, not like a commercial TV series or commercial film um, like Marvel story. I'm not talking about this, but still, it, 
some touch uh, from the uh, film director for whom it's important he will uh, add uh, this personality into that and my film and my work is very personal and very honest uh, so basically um the jokes the irony you see in the film uh, it's not something i'm <laughs> trying to push out of myself. It's just the flow uh, I used to be. And that's how I see the communication. And for me, mm, sense of humor, uh, and then people understand the humor and can respond to that. That's the highest uh, level of intellectual development of the person, in my opinion, because then you can interact with the jokes um, and then you can uh, respond to someone uh, joke and stay uh, in the face. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a very good sign, at least for me. I uh, adore people who uh, can make good jokes and can laugh and not try to laugh about uh, uh, someone's uh, sense of humor and appreciate it. So, yeah. It's interesting, just, just as a comment in the end, because uh, uh, I, I find what I know about Russian cinema and contemporary Russian cinema in particular, uh, even the, 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 the filmmakers who are more uh, to have a more uh, dark view of, of the world and of art and of cinema, which is not the case in your film at all. But I feel that there is a whole uh, branch, let's say, of Russian cinema, which is very, very tough and, and dark and very uh, pessimistic even. But even those filmmakers in general, they have a very specific humor in their own work. And I think I, only, I can only uh, guess that there is something there about Russia and about uh, the way Russian uh, people deal not only with the day-to-day the, the -day life, but also the, the difficulties and the historical uh, aspects of their creation and everything. I, I think it's very surprising sometimes because some of these more dark films in other cultures are, are completely lacking humor. And I feel that always in the Russian cinema, even the really tough and really dark films have some very strange particularly for us uh, who are watching from abroad, uh, species of, of sense of humor within their dark uh, formation. So I think it's quite a particular. I, I always enjoy finding the, the humor in the, in the Russian uh, cinema that I get access to at least. But in your case, of course, I don't think it's in a dark and, and, and pessimistic way at all, but it's still there quite notably, I think, this idea of a, a very pre precise and particular sense of humor. Yeah, probably. That, that's true. Actually, we do have uh, this film, like uh, everyone is killing each other and it's still like, <laughs> very um, exactly. funny. It looks funny for some reason. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I haven't thought about this, but that's very interesting. Yeah. So I guess we just have time for one more question. So Eduardo, do, do you want to ask something specifically? Well, I'm I'm, I'm fine. It's, then it's, I will ask something really open, but which is, is there anything else that you would like to say today to complete our conversation or talk? Um, I would love to uh, wish uh, to the audience uh, interesting journey through the film. Uh, watch it. Um, of um, um, expectation, yes. Even though it's not uh, fashionable to have expectations, but I would say have uh, this expectation from my film to um, get this celebration mood. Um, I think it's one of the most important goals uh, of cinematography to bring a celebration uh, to the people souls and minds so that's that's my uh wish uh that uh, people who are going to watch it through your film fest so uh, going to be happy after all and just just feel good that's that's what i hope will happen that's my expectation <laughs> yeah i bet they will 
<laughs> we are very happy at least. And so thank you so much, Ulus. Thank you, Eduardo, for being here with us also. E para quem está assistindo ao vídeo, fica o convite né, para conferir a programação do Olhar de Cinema, dos filmes e também das conversas sobre os filmes que estão todas disponíveis aqui no canal do YouTube. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Thank you, thank you guys, thank you Camila, thank you Eduardo. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too.